Man, do I have a great story for you today. So I got a phone call and this gentleman said he had called every shop within a hundred mile radius of him and only four people would even consider fixing this bike. But that wasn't until winter. And why didn't any of the small local shops wanna work on this bike right now? I'll explain that as we go. But for right now, let's figure out what's going on with this thing. This is the Big Dog Ridgeback. It's a raked out, hardtail, fat tire monstrosity of a motorcycle. Okay, so this thing does not start. We have 107 cubic inches of fury. We have some Kirker exhaust, so I'm sure it's loud. I think I read this thing has like an 82 or 83 inch wheelbase, and it's like 107 inches long from stem to stern. It's huge. It looks like they have, like I said, it's a 107 inch SNS engine. We have SNS intake, shorty carb, all pretty standard. It is a 2004 Ridgeback, so it is hardtail. That's exciting. That, those are always fun to ride. <laughs> the seat suction cupped on. Oh my gosh. Look at this. What's going on in there? I don't know. That's never any good. So I'm seeing a mess here, and that's to be expected. <laughs> I can't even say this without laughing. The customer complaint is the bike won't crank anymore. Apparently they tried jump starting it with like a bulldozer or something then, and, and used 24 volts and left the smoke out of something. So yeah, I'm not surprised to see this. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Did they try to start it with a cat, a cat 953, and that's why it wouldn't start? I see what you did there. So this is gonna take me back to why smaller shops in the area just don't wanna work on this kind of stuff in generally springtime, summertime, is because it's it's they're gonna get in pretty deep. They don't know what's wrong. All they hear is somebody tried to start it with something a little too powerful, and fried something into the electrical system. This being a custom bike, they would put that work off until winter, right? You can't blame the small shops for that. They gotta make money while they can. But that's why we're here, because I'm dumb enough to say yes. <laughs> Anywho, that's a little concerning. I don't know. Here, Dan, look, yeah. how, look how clean everything is, right? I mean, it's a little dusty. It's but a little dusty, that, yeah. but look. Look, we have switches here. Huh? How many wires do you see? None. None. They're all hidden. Beautiful. We have throttle cables and brake lines all nicely, all nicely done. Look how this is all nicely done. Wires tucked in for your brake, uh, brake switch. Everything's so nice. And then you come to this and I have a hard time believing that it left the factory looking like this. That means somebody else was already in here and has given up. Well, I mean, it is hidden under the seat, so. Yeah, but come on. I mean, maybe it left the factory that way. I mean, no. why, do, why do you think they got these walls here? No, look how nice this is. And then we just come to this. That's a clue. <laughs> That's a clue. When you're looking at something for the first time, you know, keep mental note of some of these things. First step here is we need to pull this apart. It's wire tied in. Lay things out a little bit, see what we got. Is that a knife and a heart? Yeah. Is that a clue? Is that a clue? Zelda. Zelda's been here. <laughs> What? That? What is that? What are you holding? No, just a wire that doesn't go anywhere. That's a loose wire. Uh-oh. Okay, I take it back what I said. There's no way it left the factory like this. <laughs> right. So in my investigating on this bike, I found there was, there was three cases or three instances reported. These uh, 2004 big dogs were actually shutting off unexpectedly. The NTSB started an investigation and found that it was a connector for electrical control module it was faulty. Once they figured that out, they closed the case. But I wonder if we're going to run into some of that issue with this bike. That wire was spliced. Like when you're splicing wires and stuff, like lay it all out so you don't take a plug like this and then splice the yellow wire around the other stuff so you have to recut it to get everything separated. stresses me out Dan. I got a new plan. My new plan is I'm just gonna take all the stuff out of here and see if I can open it up that way. It's just a quick little trick I do when I'm pulling a bunch of electrical stuff apart. I like to just, I'll mark them either with zip ties so I can quickly identify what goes to what and that just saves me time when I'm putting things back together or I'll take a marker and I'll get a couple different color markers and I'll just give them a mark, something like that. It's a good habit, saves you a little time when you're reassembling. Big Dog Motorcycles was founded in 1994 by Sheldon Coleman. Yes, that Coleman. And quickly became the largest custom motorcycle manufacturer 
delivering over 30,000 units worldwide. This makes my brain hurt. This is getting more wild the longer we look at it. I want to reiterate the fact of what I said earlier about small shops taking on a project like this this time of the year. Spring, summer, you know, they're making money on tire changes, oil changes, inspections, that kind of thing, right? They don't want to be sitting here doing this and they got guys lined up for service work and things that they can move in and out of the shop quick. Totally don't blame them. I don't know, Dan. I might have you disentangle this while I go eat lunch. Oh, is that what's gonna happen? Makes you think my fingers are any better at untangling cords. You see my computer desk, Craig. Yeah, it drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm just gonna start cutting stuff. That sounds like a last resort, Craig. It sounds like you're just getting frustrated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. That's a bare wire. Whoa! Yo, that thing got smoked. It's like black, charred. Yeah, dude, that should have insulation on so it. So they like overloaded a wire. Okay, well that's that's a thing. We're gonna replace that. Cutting wires and unpinning plugs is like Death Con 5. We just, you just gotta go for it. So the first issue I need to address is replacing and fixing all the burnt wires, wrapping my head around what's going on. And until I do that, it's hard to move on to the next step. What time do the stunt doubles come? Look, it burned the insulation right off of them. So what happened is when this was in the, in the harness and the ground wire got hot, you see that it melted through the insulation there on that. Oh. So I've done it plenty of times where you can hit a 12 volt system with 24 volts. Generally it's on bigger equipment, tractors, trucks, construction equipment. Those wires are all bigger. I mean, look how thin these wires are. So it's not that they hit it with 24 volts, but the amperage, that's what created the heat. That's what did this in. Okay, we're getting places. Now this is the point that separates mechanics from parts replacers. You see, as a mechanic, I wanna take this apart and figure out what's going on and wrap my head around it. This is nutty. Even though going through all these wires is absolutely dreadful. Where the parts replacer just orders all new parts for everything, puts them in, and then hopefully the bike will work. But the problem is they don't actually know what it was that was broke. So I spent way too much time and way too much energy untangling this mess, trying to figure out what in the world is going on there. At the end of the day, this probably was not worth it, and it came back to bite me. And since I hate admitting that I'm wrong, I'm gonna blame it on Dan, and I should've just started replacing parts. Okay, I'm excited. Well, that was only like almost two days worth of work to get the burnt wires situated. Almost two days? You were in here forever. I was. Yo, I wanna put some power to this and see what happens. Let me get some volts. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, uh. That's a good sign. Look at that. You did something. That, that sounds bad. Ah, got one. Got one what? Oh, a little bugger or a hummingbird or something. Oh, oh, that was your, that was my bun zapper. <laughs> I thought that was the motorcycle. I was like, did you fry something else? <laughs> you really got me there, Craig. No turn signals over there. I don't see anything. No turn signals here. No horn. Ah, poo poo. And all of that was a huge waste of time because all I got to work was the speedometer. So what I learned after looking, pondering, and reading all of this is that the original wire harness and controller was hacked off and replaced with an aftermarket system. So I called my new best friend over at Wild Steed Works and he got me on the right path and sent me the parts I needed to get this bike fixed up. What do you got there, Craig? <laughs> I got new <laughs> electrical parts. Oh my These god. These came from Wild Steedworks. Gonna open them up, see what all we have. This is the new controller box and ended up getting a new harness. There's supposed to be a mid harness, should be connecting in here somewhere, down to here. And then this is all gonna get removed and plugged into this new box because all of these componentries are fried. So first step, I'm gonna open this up, read these instructions thoroughly before attempting to install. So I'm gonna give you those instructions, Dan, and I'm gonna get the gas tank drained and off and hopefully find this wire harness. All right, let's Nancy Drew it. If you have not replaced your OEM voltage regular- At one point, these bikes were really expensive motorcycles and they were made with some really, really nice parts. But as the years went on and the chopper phase faded out, the market dropped and the value of these bikes is nowhere near what it used to be. So that puts this bike and the owner in a huge predicament. And that's the problem. When you have a major repair like this on a boutique brand, the bill can be $5,000. 
and that's probably more than half of what this bike is actually worth. That's another reason small shops don't wanna fix this because handing the customer a bill like that is stressful. I think what's gonna happen, these are gonna stay down here. This gets fed up through here. We take this off. We have these plugs to put on these wires. Boom. I don't think that's gonna fit through with those connectors on. Figure it out as we go, right, Dan? Just start snipping. Oh, jeez. Looks like quite a hot mess you're creating there, Craig. Yeah, I know. Well, we come this far, I guess I'm just cutting the rest of these. And now we just kind of hope that all the wires we cut are in the side of this harness that we're going to fish up through there. Okay, I'm liking where this is headed. So after fiddling around with what can only be described as a rat nest of this wire harness, I got to admit, it's pretty satisfying just cutting it all out and starting over. How much more stuff can this be connected to? All of it. Apparently. Where do they go? Nobody really knows. So we'll just do that. This come off there because we have a new one of these yeah well, if we got a new one just rip it out violently heck yeah there. okay now ground bet you that's compression okay that's horn starter that goes down to the starter man this is a really nice harness oh the plot thickens here my friend what way did the plot thicken oh, i found some more connectors oh that's good <laughs> this is kind of just like a puzzle so now that I think I successfully removed all the old fried wire harness, the only thing to do now is put the tank on, fill it with some fresh gas, put 12 volts to it, and see if this thing will crank over. Huh? We're nice and snug. Snug as a pug. Snug as a pug. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> what do we want to do next, Dan? Put the battery in. Put the battery in, turn the key on, and see if it smokes. I've had this battery on the charger for a little bit. <laughs> Here's a funny story. DECA makes batteries for Harley. They also make batteries for other companies. Where you buy a Harley style battery, you get this little spacer right here, right? And what that is, because the manufacturer is not allowed to replicate the specific, specific battery they make for Harley. So they take this terminal, these terminals here, and they just, they set them back a little bit from the side of the case. So when you go like this, you have a gap. So they give you these little spacers to fill in that gap. That's like their loophole. <laughs> How cool is that? Part of their agreement for making the OEMs is they can't do an exact copy. That bugger's in there. Okay, well, good news is nothing caught on fire yet. I always, oh, I grabbed an 11. How did I screw that up? You don't even need an 11 in your rack unless you do a Home Depot hardware. All right, let's turn this key on. Hopefully I get some lights down here on this control box, maybe something on this ignition box, and hopefully some stuff on the dash. Okay, we got dash. Oh, I got stuff down here. Oh, oh, oh. Craig, that's everything you said you wanted. Everything I said I wanted. Two lights, does it give us anything in the instructions about? Okay, so if I press the run button, the headlight should come on. Okay, so what if I do this? Okay, all right. So now if I... <laughs> Woo! Horn Rex. Turn signals. Odometer. So it should be ready to crank. See here, and then we'll get some gas to it. Start. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Yes. Okay, check these spark plugs. Maybe throw some new plugs in. I don't know how long this bike has been sitting. Hopefully it doesn't need a carburetor clean. One more test flight here. Check, make sure we got spark coming out of these spark hoses. Can you hold that? Yep. It's gonna puff out of here, so just watch your face. Yep, I got spark, okay. Mm. Oh, yeah, I got shocked too. I'm gonna put a little dielectric grease on there, help those plugs come off a little bit easier. I don't know why my tubes of dielectric grease always do this, but they burst out the sides. I wanna know why. Should we put some gas to it? The harness went in super easy. The control unit went in super easy. The tank went right on. Some might say this is actually going almost a little too easy. Whoa, oh my gosh, cut that out. Dan. What? Can't hold that. Hold okay, that? that'll stay. Let's see if that's enough to get us going. It's gonna fire right up. 
We know we have compression. We know we have air. Now that the new harness and controller are installed, we confirmed we also have spark. Now all we need is fuel. And then hopefully we're gonna hear this big dog bark. Um, is it smoking? Fuel up into it. So after a few cranks, I realized, yep, dirty carb. So I pulled the carburetor, cleaned it out really good, put on my lucky socks, and I was excited to give it another go. What oh, happens if it does? Oh, now we got some. We got some? We got some accelerator pump action going. Oh, we got some. We got some. However, my dreams came to a screeching halt when this happened. Getting close. What's up, man? I don't want to heat things up too much. Keep the starter cool. I'm not sure I like that. I, I don't think it's supposed to make different noises every time you try to run it. Whoa. Ugh. And that, my friends, was the sound of the reduction gear and the starter braking. Starter locked up. So I pulled the starter back out of the bike, dropped it off at the shop to get rebuilt. Let's go see if we can catch the starter guys. To the starter guys! And since I'm so impatient, I went back to the other shop, grabbed every Harley starter I could, but guess what? They didn't fit. Yeah, so we got the starter back. He said the reduction gear was broke and a couple other things on the inside were loose and not quite right. So that should all be set now. We're finishing the Put it on hopefully that's the last issue we have on this bike and that explains why a lot of shops don't want to deal with this stuff that rubber cap is tricky don't let the rubber cap win craig oh i won't okay so that's hooked up that's hooked up that's hooked up we have a new harness we have a new ehc we have new plugs we have fresh gas we have a clean carburetor all the stars are aligned i can't wait to hear this bike run and quite frankly i'm sick and tired of working on it this has been way too long one problem after another after another after another i miss my family i'm tired of working and i need to get a video out this is it this has to work Well, we're getting good turning. It's almost like we're not getting spark now. What the? We lost spark? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Give it a hit. Oh, spark. Yeah, what would have changed? I don't know. Guys, we tried everything. We tried our best and we got beat. So it's just one problem after another. So now I have to, I trouble, did some troubleshooting. I think it's the coil. I need to confirm that. And then I need to find a coil to order so we can put it in and hopefully get this bike to start. But for now, we're out of time. Don't worry, I'm not gonna give up. I never do. And this bike will run. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe like this video, leave some comments, check out these videos right here. You're gonna love them. I gotta get back to work. <laughs>